Before we begin today's video, I want to give a special thank you to the continuous support of the Silly Billy members Challenge Turnbu, Gieter Geit, Creeper XOX, Camille is a Gret Defender, Media Films, IT, Mavers, Immer Gaming, and Javi Koopa. Thank you so much for your continuous support, guys. It really helps out the channel a lot. Also, during the recording of this video, I was a little bit sick, so excuse the rest for your voice. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into this interview. everybody and welcome to the actual penultimate installment of the Disventure Camp interview series. My name is Silly Billy, but you can call me Billy. It is now a couple of weeks after the finale of Disventure Camp has aired, and that also means the interview series is coming to an end. Uh, though we are ending off strong. Two interviews instead of one. In this first interview, we meet up with the voice behind our runner-up. Please give a warm welcome to Ellie's voice actress, Rachel. Rachel, welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm so excited to be here. It's amazing to have you. I'm really excited for this. So. Sure, so my name is Rachel and I am a voice actor, but I really only do that as a hobby. Uh, my actual job is that I am an aerospace engineer. <laughs> So uh, voiceover is kind of my side hustle. I've been involved with a couple of voiceover projects, a lot of which have been in the uh, animated reality game show community. So I'm really lucky to have had a lot of opportunities to get to voice some really fun characters. Awesome. An aerospace engineer. What, what do I need to <laughs> imagine uh, with that? Yeah, so you know how, you know, like in the movies, there's Houston, we have a problem. Uh -huh. Well, I sit in the mission control room that works to solve those problems. Oh, so, sweet. Uh, yeah, I work in NASA mission control right now. So very exciting times. <laughs> Dang, that is really cool. <laughs> and then as a hobby, you uh, get yourself into all of these amazing uh, voiceover projects. When have you started doing that? Yeah, so I first started getting involved with voiceover around um, 2020. Uh, I took a voiceover class in my undergrad uh, college years. And uh, when I did that, they kind of taught me uh, how to record voiceover, how to mix audio tracks, stuff like that. So uh, since then, I have been kind of picking up occasional gigs off of a YouTube uh, animated series mostly <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how I got my intro into voiceover and I've been really lucky that uh, I've made a ton of friends in the voiceover and animation community and uh, they continue to make really great products and really cool uh, things that they've been working on that I've been able to be a part of so <laughs> sweet well it's great to have you on and of course we do not have one guest we have two from one runner-up we are going straight into the next season's runner-up and no, I'm not giving you all-star spoilers because the next season really is the last season. Man, this show can be confusing sometimes. Anyway, please welcome proofreader and voice of Aiden Weister. Vi, welcome to the show as well. Hey. Hi, thanks so much for having me. It's so fun to have you on. I've been looking forward to talking with you. Can Absolutely. you tell the audience a little bit about yourself before we begin? Sure. So hello, everyone. My name is Vi or Weister or Evie. I am a proofreader for the seasons of Disventure Camp. I am a voice actor. When I'm not doing that, I am a performer slash singer. I love to act. I love to sing. I love to just use my voice in any particular way to create lots of art. And it's the best. And thankfully, I have come across this venture camp and I've been a part of the community and every person has been so great. I'm also an avid member of the Or community, which is people who compete in games like Survivor and Big Brother. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's all about me. Guys, welcome to the show. Uh, we have a couple of things to talk about today. And of course, the first topic that I want to bring up is Ellie's character herself. I think Ellie is such mm. a interesting character. But before we dive into her alignment on the good to evil chart, uh, I'm very curious, uh, Rachel, what was the vibe that uh, this character gave you when you were voicing her? Yeah, so I really felt like I kind of was learning a lot about Ellie with the audience. Um, every script I got, I kind of got a little bit more insight into who she is and what she's about. Um, I know I mentioned this on our uh, like charity fundraiser, but the inspiration for her voice was uh, heavily influenced by Tara Strong's Raven, 
uh, as well as kind of just my own spin on trying to make her sound like a little bit more of an awkward young adult teenager as well. Ellie, for me, was such a fun character to watch develop over this season because um, when we started the show, I had a feeling that she was going to win again. Like, she obviously won Adventure Camp um, as well. And I thought, well, they're probably going to switch up the elimination order, but I wasn't really expecting anybody else to take home the win. So watching Ellie from the beginning, you, you automatically have this main protagonist vibe over her. But then as yes. the episodes progress, she she slowly starts to become, well, a little more less nice. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, jeez. How is that, Aiden? So, uh, Aiden, Vi, that's, that's confusing. I keep doing that. There's, There's a lot of names. You know? <laughs> it, it is a lot of names, yeah. It's, it's weird, too, because I don't know you guys in person. I only hear you guys' voice. And I automatically associate those with the characters that you're playing. So I hear Vi talking. It's like, hey, Aiden is here. <laughs> so Yeah. So, uh, Vi, I guess. can you tell a bit uh, about uh, Ellie? What was she like for you? Oh, geez. So from like the very first episodes, we can get the sense that Ellie is just kind of in the background because a lot of the earlier episodes focus on the alliance that Lil has built to position themselves further in the game. So we just see Ellie kind of laying back. And it's mainly through the, the actions of Fiore that gets everybody to distrust each other on that team that leads to that team getting eliminated. And I feel like that's when Ellie realizes that her, Alec, and Fiore can just take over the game at that point. Ellie starts to learn and adapt, which I think is very, uh, as like a com one competitor to another, I think that it was very smart of her to lay back and observe. And when she finally got the opportunity to do something, she did it by using Gabby to eliminate Ashley. She did whatever she could to benefit her position. What I really love about Ellie's character, she always puts herself first. Like she obviously has relationships. She wants to keep those relationships, but at the end of the day, she wants to win. And we can very much see that in all the episodes after the merge. It, she's primarily thinking about herself. She's making deals. She's being a go-getter. She's acting completely different from how she did in the first half of the game, which was going from this quiet, like sit back, observe kind of person into bam, now I've done what I needed to do and now I really have a shot to win this. I totally agree. And I think uh, actually Ellie's strategy, at least in the first half of the game, I think is very similar to Miriam's strategy. I don't think mm. uh, the two characters are really all that different, like at least in the first half, just because they really are, you know, kind of coasting through just trying to see how far they can get without, you know, stirring the pot too much. But then once Ellie realizes that there is a target on her back, I do think she really kicks it up and, uh, has to do what she has to do to make it all the way to the end. And I think that is telling for uh, this venture camp as well as a whole. You you see that these characters, uh, unlike a show like Total Drama, for example, most of the characters here have an actual strategic brain and they're not afraid to use each other for their own goals and, and purposes and such. And Ellie is definitely one of those characters too who doesn't really mind abusing her power in the game to, to get herself further in it. Whereas in like Total Drama, that role is usually reserved for the villain of the show, which I think is also why this show has a lot of gray characters, so to say. It's not really a clear distribution of who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. I agree completely, except for in the case of Fiore. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and, and, except for in the case of Fiore. But like, is Gret really more the, a villain than, than Ellie? Or is Miriam more of a hero than Ellie is? I, I don't necessarily know. I actually heavily agree with you, and I'm glad that you brought up Gret, because Gret is somebody who didn't waste any time getting right into the strategies of the game, and, you know, she didn't mind who she had to backstab along the way, and I think from a competitor's aspect, you see all the time in, in shows like Survivor, people who jump right into the game are usually left, like, with no elsewhere to go, because they're, they're thinking that they're going to run all the way to the finish line, and they just don't have any gas left. And we see that Gret was eliminated the very second opportunity that she had. Whereas Ellie, you know, taking her time and adapting, like I wouldn't say that there is a clear villain this season. I think everyone's just trying to get one step further and you just have so many characters who are, who want to go farther, 
but you only have a handful of characters that wouldn't mind sacrificing some of their morals to get to that spot, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, totally definitely. Agree. You see it with Miriam too. You see it with uh, Dan as in a certain regard too as well, especially when he realizes that Drew gets voted out by one of his allies. Like mm. he starts to distrust everybody. Um, yeah. I think there are only a couple of people who, who don't really put their morals aside. Gabby being the main one coming to mind for that. Ellie is definitely one of the characters who is um, more so on the, on the gray scale. At least for the, for the beginning part, I would say, <laughs> because I I seem to recall a certain speech from Ellie um, <laughs> towards the final five uh, when she is kind of fed up with this character called Jake. <laughs> um, I replay the scene every day in my head because <laughs> of how glorious it is. Right, yeah. So I already kind of get your stance on this. I, I I believe people are really divided on this scene. Um, can you tell a little bit about what that scene was for you? Me first. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm asking Vi first, but Rachel, you Got can it. definitely. He's, I was yeah. like, didn't he like? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Who's my... you? <laughs> <laughs> so my stance on the whole Ellie versus Jake thing in that episode was. I've said this before, if I had somebody like Jake in my ear squawking at me about everything that I did wrong and how everything was my fault, yeah, I would have I would have probably reacted the same way as Ellie because as Ellie has said, like when when Jake, Tom and Miriam all voted out Gabby, Ellie completely understood because their their alliances weren't together. Jake is at Jake is not able to separate game from personal. And I feel like that is where the disconnect is. Because if you try to reason with somebody who is so emotionally in the game and not thinking strategically above all else, you're going to get a conflict. And it's at, at some point, it's going to break. You can't have someone squawking in your ear over and over again. <laughs> and I feel like ellie was extremely validated in what she said game wise you know obviously she did bring up the fact that jake got dumped by his ex-boyfriend that was a nice little like nick there too but i feel like in the heat of the moment it just makes ellie look even though she told jake off i'm glad she stood up for herself i, I think i have uh, a bit of the same where i agree with the outburst but not necessarily the way that she said it <laughs> um rachel how was that for you yeah i totally agree i think that again she could have been a little bit nicer she kind of took some low blows there but um at the same time i totally think it's like in the realm of her character i don't think she is a person that really considers other people's feelings and anything she does. Um, and again, th that might be a way to say that, you know, she's, oh, a bad person because she doesn't do that. But I think, you know, if we're really calling her a morally great character, I mean, it kind of, in my opinion, puts her at like a true neutral where she straight mm. up, you know, isn't necessarily, you know, going to be swayed by other people's feelings, opinions, beliefs, things like that. So I think to me, at least like, it was totally on brand for her to uh, take some low blows there and uh, speak her mind. But I agree that, you know, <laughs> she could have done it nicer. <laughs> I agree with that. 100%. How low the blows went that Ellie gave. Like, it's just not really something that we saw from this character before. And uh, initially, my f first response to that scene was one of excitement. Like, yeah, go, Jake, get down. Um, and <laughs> <let me. laughs> Get down. <laughs> Get down. <laughs> Get put in your place. <laughs> uh, and, and later, um, especially after speaking with uh, Josh, who is Jake's voice actor, you can watch that interview in the comments down below if you want to see that interview when you haven't yet. Uh, but he was very uh, adamant about not liking the scene because it was way too personal uh, in that regard. And I can definitely see that as well. As somebody who loves like competition games who plays them to get the same validation of getting to experience like trying to survive and outwit everybody else it, it is a very harsh environment and it lets people become something or maybe gets people ahead of themselves into where they wouldn't say something like that in real life because the stress of the competition the reward that everybody is trying to fight for 
being condensed, it really is such like a struggle between your morals and your just natural instinct to survive and win. I've seen countless times where this has been the case across a lot of games that I've played. And you know, at the end of the day, everybody's friends because the, the competition is over, but it does really get to a point of, is this going too far? Or is it not going too far enough? I agree. I think that like, you know, when you're saying, oh, is it too personal? I was gonna say, I think Jake is the one who made it personal to begin with. I don't think Ellie was trying to play the game with any sense of like personal, you know, offense, which I think is not necessarily possible. I mean, you're not gonna be able to put humans in a room and have them compete and not have, you know, personality play a massive role in, you know, mm -hmm. the effects of what goes down. That's but true, yeah. At the same time, I do think, uh, like the reason it was personal was because that's how Jake wanted to play the game, not necessarily how Ellie did. And the only way that she's going to get through to him is by playing the game on his terms in that personal aspect. Mm, you know what? Can I also say that I think the line that actually proves that that statement is true is when Jake is bombarding her with all of this. And then when they reach the end, Jake instantly goes to, you know, if you give me this, maybe I'll forgive you. That <laughs> right, yeah. would have pushed me over the edge. And I'm not <laughs> surprised that it it pushed Ellie over the edge. You, you can be salty about it. That's one thing. Uh, but if you're then going to use that as blackmail and especially with yeah, the wording. The yeah, switch like, up, the switch uh, up. So m maybe I'll forgive you, but you'll have to give me the win first. Mm -hmm. So I know I can trust you again. <laughs> no, Absolutely. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was snarky too. I mean, it was not a, a friendly like, oh, well, you know, I'll probably help you out later on, but nope, it was nope. ice cold from Jake, so. <laughs> right, yeah. Speaking, by the way, I, you've mentioned the online games that you've played uh, a couple of times as well. I, yeah. I do have a fun story to tell about this because probably a lot of the audience members might not know this, but Vi and I have actually <laughs> played in a couple of games together. Uh, yeah. And my my favorite moment was you joined in on a season where I was co-hosting with somebody else and I got oh. to read everything you were typing in your confession. <laughs> like everything. I knew your whole game plan. <laughs> and you play dirty, my friend. Very, very <laughs> dirty. <laughs> So, oh, wow. Did I? I don't remember. <laughs> the don't deny die. this. You know this too. So come next season and uh, I get to participate as a contestant alongside Vi. And like my first game plan was like, you know, I like the man, but he needs to go because he will end up dominating this game if we let him. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, did that lead to an all out war. <laughs> Powerful. Yeah, what happened was both me and Billy had established like our sides. Like it was basically two sides going to war. Yeah. And it got messy. It got so messy because in the end, um, Billy's side had a traitor and that traitor spilled all their information to us. And that's how we got the upper hand and we took all of them out one by one. I believe it was you that went first. Uh, no, I was not. I, I was like oh. third or fourth to go. First, it was, it was a couple of, of allies. Th that was in the phase when we hadn't figured out who our mole was just yet. It wasn't very much later that I went to, no. <laughs> yeah, and I remember in my confessionals being like, yeah, I mean, he's he's great. Like, but <laughs> when I put all that aside, I had to get him out. It, duck, it was duck guts to go, yeah. <laughs> the, duck, the duck guts to go. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun too, yeah. I mean, as, as soon as I was eliminated, yeah, you you like, entered with something like <laughs> duck season has finished or something. <laughs> yeah, it was duck season had concluded. Yeah. <laughs> but like at the end of the day, it was so fun. Like, it was, and that's yeah. what I love about Survivor and Big Brother types of games is that you just come up with all these strategies, you try it out with people, and, and you know, sometimes it does get a little messy, but the overall point is to have fun. And I feel like that's a very important lesson that I learned by the end of that season. Right. And despite yeah. all the messiness that happened. <laughs> that's very true, yeah. We have the, the one we announced a little while back, uh, Total Drama Duck Pond, which is currently in process. I can't really say how far we are into the game, but we've played a couple of episodes now, mm. and it's it's chaos it's so much fun it is as it should be right yeah there it is 
it's amazing to see actually because it, it was a very difficult selection to make but because of that difficult selection we have 20 people in the game who all desperately want to win it and like it, it's it's a nightmare to keep up i have been uh, behind a couple of uh, ep recording sessions already and it's it's growing more and more and more but you have 20 people who all have their own alliances and own strategies and all want to share what they're doing with you and oh god it is such chaos but it is it is the best thing honestly and i think once these videos start rolling out which is probably not going to be for a couple more months but they they will come out uh i think this show is is going to be so much fun i think honestly it, it tops uh certain total drama seasons in terms of strategy like some of these people are creative it but is like insane. when when doesn't like online stuff top most total drama content that that's wait is that is that a diss towards total drama <laughs> <laughs> no i guess in the strategy sense i mean i'm I don't, are we allowed to talk about like the reboot and all that stuff uh maybe not or season no. two because okay. i've not seen it yet <laughs> all right so yeah season one is fine to use as an example i yeah. mean the strategy has definitely gotten better in total drama but it wasn't the main focus of most total drama seasons no which is where i think the presence online and like you know stuff like the org communities like help nourish that and like get finally gives people what they want in that aspect you know what i mean true yeah and this venture camp does a good job in that as well and what i always find weird about total drama is that they make it seem like the person with the strategic mind is the villain like no why are they they're, they're trying to win right i'll tell you i'll tell you why because at the end of the day it's a cartoon and p and they need to what they need to portray is like an active cartoon that people want to watch and people want to root against certain people like they're, they're the morals in that that kind of show are just a hundred percent up or a hundred percent down there's that's there's no true. in between yeah. there's no morally like Actually, that's a big statement. I don't know if I want to say there's no more uh, characters. I immediately started thinking thinking of Duncan, and I was like, mm, "You sure?" But no, <laughs> definitely, it's it's far more easy to put people on the good side or the bad side. How about you, uh, Rachel? Do you have experience with uh, online games? like this i haven't actually and now hearing you guys talk about it, it makes me want to participate because that sounds like a lot of fun but i also I don't know how good i would be at it <laughs> get a helmet it is a rocky oh, road out there yeah it is <laughs> oh that reminds me by the way uh rachel uh last time we met up um you were talking about a pretty interesting way how you got into the uh total drama slash this venture camp community uh do you mind uh recapping that story here yeah, I absolutely can. So um, full admittance here, I am a little bit of a fake uh, total drama fan. Gosh. <laughs> um, Whoa. I know, that's my reveal. Uh, I've become a fan and I love the community. So uh, glad to be here now. But uh, I definitely did not watch uh, total drama growing up. Uh, it was kind of on Cartoon Network, but I had other shows that I would watch like religiously. And I'd just kind of like catch like an occasional like total drama episode like here or there, but I never really like knew who the characters were or like followed the plot or any of that stuff. Um, but my introduction to the community was actually in 2020 um, when I was taking this voiceover class and everything. And I just was scrolling through my like YouTube recommended videos. And I'd seen a post about um, voiceover uh, or like voice actor auditions for um, Total Drama Reunion. So um, mm -hmm. I ended up submitting an audition for some characters and I ended up getting to voice Courtney and Eva in Total Drama Reunion. Rest in peace. <laughs> that was you? Yeah, yeah, so I voiced Courtney and <laughs> wow. Eva in Total Drama Reunion. Yeah, very different than uh, Ellie's voice. Eva's a little close, but uh, Courtney is not close at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, and uh, that was a really great experience. That was my first kind of introduction into uh, the total drama and like animated reality game show type uh, community. So that was really cool. I didn't realize what a massive fan base uh, total drama had in general. And then getting to see all these different spinoffs and other projects that people have been making has been so cool and so amazing. So I'm really glad that I kind of stumbled into this community, but uh, it definitely was a little bit of a shock <laughs> to see what was going on here. Yeah, I can imagine. So ladies and gentlemen watching at home, grab your pitchforks, 
come hunt down Rachel. She is a fake fan. Fake I repeat, fan. a no. fake fan. No, I'm a fan now. I'm a fan now. I'm Do late like- to the late to the party. I will say before I started uh, voicing Eva and Courtney for Total Drama Reunion, I did watch. Um, I think almost all of like the Total Drama like Island series to try to get a feel for like who the characters were. So I did catch up. I got there eventually, but it did take me a little bit of time. I was late to the party. <laughs> That's fine. We'll forgive you this time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just don't ask me like trivia questions because I will not know the answer and I do apologize. I'm learning. Oh, you're going to have a hard time on those uh, uh, online games. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> it's fine. Wonders are not out of this world just yet. When we did like a redonkulous race kind of season, I participated together with Jam, who uh, viewers of the channel might know from the Minecraft channel that I run. He's a member on the same server there. He does not know a single thing about Total Drama. He has no idea. He barely knows what Survivor is. Um, had no idea about the characters, no ab- idea about the lore or the, the stories or anything. He was just along for the fun time. And we ended up getting third place. So I'd say you'd have a pretty decent shot. <laughs> See, I think it might be an advantage to Darn be like the God. underdog. <laughs> You're good. Right, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Sometimes yeah. people want to take you through the game and they think they can beat you at the end. And sometimes you surprise them. It would be fun to try, but I don't have uh, high ambitions for my uh, abilities to survive in that environment. <laughs> you want You want to take one of the five that I'm in right now? Oh. oh man, you're booked and busy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be pretty chaotic. I try to limit myself to one, uh, just because I'm way too busy uh, with other stuff as well. I, I don't think I would be able to juggle five. Are you equally active in all five of them, or is there one that you uh, desperately want to win? In? Here's the thing. I feel like I need to get in myself invested in in a game first. Like I'll give it a couple of days. And like, if I can get like a solid footing, that's when I really try to like go for it. At some point, you start to become tired of the stagnant conversation of, hi, hello, how are you? How's your day going? (laughs) I just get like easily disconnected. I just want to jump right into strategy. Right. You're like, yeah. how to get moving with the eliminations. I don't Just care like, about right. friends. <laughs> let's, let's get you out of here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and sometimes you you kind of you're forced into being good friends with people because otherwise they're not gonna want to keep you around. Mm. Like a lot of people play with their emotions, so getting on their good side is definitely a good strategy here. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> 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 Speaking of Jake, Jake is actually a good segue back into this venture camp because um, when I had the interview with Josh I alluded to earlier, um, we talked, uh, among other things, about the similarities between Jake and Aiden. And she was very much against the idea. She saw where people were coming from, but she thought Jake and Aiden were vastly different characters. I am curious if I ask the same question to the voice actor of Aiden, if he thinks Jake and Aiden are vastly different characters as well. Here's the thing. Like, they can be boiled down to characters who use their emotions first before they really, like, think truly about how situations can lead to impact. Like we see in season two, Aiden threw a lot of hinky votes randomly, even though there was a very clearly established plan. <laughs> like at certain points, I know that he was the one vote against Ali in the elimination against uh, Tess. And I think he did it again when he voted for Rhea when Lake was supposed to go. But that one is more understandable. That shows that he puts his relationships first. And I think Jake, we're, we're seeing two alternate dimensions, I believe. <laughs> like, I believe that Aiden got the good timeline. Aiden got to keep most of his friends. Aiden got the guy in the end. Even though it was a rocky relationship, we saw that there was there was paths and Aiden ended up on the good path and Aiden got everything he wanted at the end he got the guy he got some of the million you know from being connected with James he got to keep most of his friends and we see on the other side of what what having that kind of emotional drive if it doesn't work out the way that you want we see that Tom and Jake don't end up together, unlike Aiden and James. We see him him having a very close friendship with Miriam, but apart from that, what relationships did he make on in the camp that weren't Miriam? He doesn't really 
he didn't really have anybody. And you know, he went through lots of grief during that season when his when his grandma died. I think trying to say that Aiden and Jake are the same character is is maybe not so accurate. I can see where the argument is because in the end they're both very emotional people who lead with their emotions first and don't think about the consequences. But we can see the difference between how that can be positive and how that can lead to all these great things as it did with Aiden, but we can also see how it it really harmed Jake and like isolated him and kept him inside of his head. Yeah, true. I like this idea of um, Aiden and Jake being like, one got the good ending and one got the bad ending. Yeah. And I'm curious what it's going to bring for uh, both characters the next time around, because the, the new cast for the new season has been uh, announced. All three of us are in it, so yay! Yay! <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but that also means, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, Aiden is back, James is back, Jake is back, and uh, Tom is back. Yes. So I'm very interested to see how this combination of these two uh, couples is, is going to be. And you are going to find that out. Right. <laughs> when they release Stay tuned. No, no spoilers whatsoever. We're not getting to pry anything out of you this this time. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're still involved with uh, writing the, the scripts for season three, right? Yes, absolutely. I oh. have, we are decently far into it. A lot of episodes have gone by now. And all I'm going to say, it is a very interesting season. Oh. You are... It is a very bombastic season, and I believe it's going to shake some people. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. I'm also curious what it's going to mean for Ellie next time around, because she's had her, like, downfall in a lesser <laughs> degree as well. And I can imagine that she kind of starts from scratch in the next season, too. She's either going to be in her villain era or maybe she'll, you know, be a whole new person. Villain Ellie would be her, fun. Yeah, that would definitely shake. Vibe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would we'll shake things see. up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's room for Ellie to be a villain with the amount of villains that are returning for the season. But if they are going like the total drama all-stars route where the main villain is actually one of the good guys... <laughs> then Ellie would definitely be, oh, that would be a fun pick to make the main villain of this season. <laughs> Honestly, that would be fun. I've actually never played a villain before, so um, I would enjoy playing a villain. Why? Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you Just understand the difference between proofreading and actually writing. This Just thing. do it. Look, I've, I've done the proofreading thing too. Just change the script. Nobody will notice. Ellie I think... throws everyone under a bus. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I think Jace will definitely notice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably. Yeah, that's true. What about we go watch an uh, episode together? Sounds good. Sure. Uh, for the viewers at home, we are not going to watch the full episode here. We're going to stop about halfway through when a certain event happens uh, that is probably no longer a spoiler for 99.9% .9 of you watching. But just in case for that one person who does not yet know why Ellie's voice actress is here, uh, we're gonna keep it a real good secret why we're stopping there. Yeah, let's just get this going. Are you guys ready? Absolutely. Yes. Three, two, one. Bam. Previously on this venture camp, the final four participated in a series of mini challenges while in pairs. The winning pair were not only guaranteed a spot in the finale, but also got. I love Alex's little flail. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I also like that they are using Fiore uh, to to pummel her throughout the mo the season, especially throughout last episode. <laughs> I, know, I feel like Ellie was the punching bag for a lot of this season. So when Fiore gets punched a little bit. Kind of <laughs> Who will take home one million dollars? Find out tonight! I like this final three, by the way. I, I'm happy it's that... So, it's, un, it's unpredictable, I think. Yeah, true. I like that Miriam gets to be here. It's the same uh, finale as in Adventure Camp, I believe, but now it with is, an additional yeah. Miriam. Yeah. Which I was surprised that they went that route. Me too. Well, no, I just felt it coming all the way. Hashtag Miriam Miracle, people. 
<laughs> the Miriam miracle. It's it's live. It's here. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> no, I, it's the same here. I was hoping that she'd get more screen time just because I thought her character was fun in terms of design. Back, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I can't really believe that she's here. <laughs> about their experience here at camp. I can't believe I've come this far. And I'm in the finale against a six-year-old girl and a 70-year-old woman. Not to toot my own horn, but I couldn't have chosen a better pair. Oh. Mm. I see. <laughs> poor, poor, poor choice of words. <laughs> I'll admit, this old woman looks like she doesn't stand a chance. But don't count me out just yet. I have a few tricks up my sleeve. So I have a little secret. Oh. I don't know if you know this yet, but oh. uh, Kat's, uh, Miriam's voice actor, Kat, uh, she couldn't get her lines in on time. So I had to be the, the voice of Miriam for these next, for these last two episodes. No way. And then they, and then they overdubbed, they overdubbed me no. with, with, with her oh, when she got her lines say, in. I was going to say, you're not in the final cut, right? <laughs> No. <laughs> that would have been insane because so i would you, not have noticed yeah, that yeah if you see miriam talking right now her, uh -huh. i don't know if it's clear to see but but it turns out i got to meet a few worthwhile people yeah she had to dub over my lines but she did a really oh, good job that's so funny <laughs> I mean, you've always been a person who likes doing weird voices, right? I remember a certain Gilbert Gottfried impersonation. <laughs> I don't remember that! <laughs> Can it's, you remind me? <laughs> it's uncanny. I love that so much. <laughs> that way. But I guess you can't please everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the little giggle. So that they could give us their thoughts on their sweets and Ooh, this is a juicy moment. My stay at Dispenser Camp was shorter than I would have Everyone's liked. Everyone's back. But yes. I stayed true to my principles and was a great example for my Girl Scouts. I've learned not to be swayed by appearances. Ah, Ashley, the fair favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Turn out to be the toughest, roughest dog. Darn tootness. <laughs> Darn tootness. Yeah. You auditioned, auditioned for, for Ashley. Three characters, and one of them was Ashley. <laughs> oh, oh I also yeah, I also forgot to mention that I I had a hand in casting all the English voice actors. So watching everything play out was watching everything play out is so surreal because that's the first time I've really had that kind of responsibility. But everyone like knocked it out of the park. Wait, I have you to thank for Trevor's role. He doesn't want to talk. To me. Partially, yes. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Without falling in love with some silly boy who ends up ruining your future. <laughs> Tom is so salty. Oh, he's so done. Yeah. Oh, Alec too. They're all done. Oh, actually my favorite character, I think. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Something about him. I still love Rhea. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that Drew is voting, is rooting for Ellie. Right, I, I didn't really get that either, but like, what does he have with Miriam they or They never with talked. <laughs> at least no. uh, she was on his team. No, silly, Drew didn't talk at all. <laughs> no, but I mean, Alec, uh, Drew and Ellie weren't on the same team. Well, no, maybe that's true. Drew is actually pretty chaotic deep down and really appreciated. <laughs> Imagine Drew just... you go, you go queen. <laughs> Drew just supports Fiora out of nowhere. <laughs> I like chaos. This time, our dear patrons that make this show possible. This is so cool, this part. Oh yeah, great. It's great. And there's so many of them too. Right, you yeah. Support us making more of these episodes, you I'm like, I want a disventure camp really character it. person of me. <laughs> <laughs> Avatar or whatever it is. <laughs> it I think it's called OCs. OC, yeah. Yeah, that's OC, it. yeah. <laughs> Fake fan. Oh, what? Decision, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, like, no, like, I... <laughs> I'm a fan I'm now, okay? <laughs> Ugh. Okay, I'll give you a part of the prize. That's how I like it. <laughs> She's not getting a penny. 
Uh oh. <laughs> Your final challenge is a two-parter. In the first part, players must dive into a lake to look for a key. Once they have their key, they must run to the dining hall where there will be a chest. Using the key from the lake, they must open it. And you know, whenever I read the scripts, I have so much trouble visualizing the challenges. Like I don't even like think about what they're doing, and then when I watch it, I'm like, oh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna have a hard time with that when it comes to the <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Last person to cross will be out for a couple of these reading these i had the same issue yeah i was like you need to find a chest and then there's a shovel and, there's a and key. in the shovel <laughs> is a key <laughs> what <laughs> where is this going <laughs> yeah, i was in the competition I'd be like actually can you explain that again and maybe like draw it out so i can get like an idea <laughs> fiore we have to work together to slow ellie down I know! She's the most athletic out of us! Do you need my help? What's on your mind? Leave it to me. Uh. Ellie! It's good to see you again, bestie! I love that they're having this conversation <laughs> while running. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? <laughs> that stuff? It has been rough, no lie. But hey, let's focus on the positive. Yeah, we're here! I'm going for the key. Wait for me. You got it, the bestie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you voiced Gabby. <laughs> oh, I'd voice everyone if given the chance. Yeah, I'd love true. To do that actually. Can you go get the keys for both? That's interesting. Gret doesn't know how to swim. <laughs> is, is that true? <laughs> she says she doesn't know how to swim. Oh wow. Does Fiore also not know how to swim? That I can more so understand. <laughs> oh. My key. Hey! Also, I love how Gret's big plan was just to trip Ellie on the way coming back. <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> well, I'm going to trip Ellie. It worked. I feel like splendidly. she didn't have a plan. I feel like she just like was improving. Like she's like, man, I'll just do that. <laughs> <laughs> this this scene is freaking. <laughs> it's like. Is uh, Gabby being the most Gabby she's ever been? Right, yeah. I'm going to shove it down your throat! <laughs> I got it. Come on! How can you not like Gabby? She's just right? such a yeah. positive... You know, she kind of validates Ellie for me. You know? It's like if the yin Gabby and yang. If Gabby didn't like Ellie, then I would probably dislike Ellie. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow! Oh. <laughs> you know, she can't be that bad of a person if Gabby likes her. That's true. <laughs> Gabby is a moral compass to us all. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> Not talking to him and ever seeing him again after this could leave you feeling terrible about this entire experience. I, I think he already does, Miriam. Yeah, true. <laughs> I think it's a little too Tom, late. Tom, Tom is not better off from this Tom experience, got absolutely no. screwed by this experience. He lost his job. He got betrayed. Voted off. Okay. Started liking a Wasted boy his idol. backstabbed yeah. him. Tom yeah. got absolutely nothing out of it. <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> the fact that he came back for the second season is shocking to me. Or the third season. <laughs> well, <laughs> technically, if you have nothing left to lose, then why not? I guess, mm. but man. Got it. Leave this to me. Everyone, let's go. <laughs> So I am I realized something when watching this. So you see how Fiore just took his map. Yeah. We're gonna I'll 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 speak on it a little listen, later, Brett, but it's like we'll I listen need to your Fiore. Help. Tell me. You have my map and I have Miriam's. How did she get like okay, so I, wait, this is not the time, not the time. <laughs> now we can we can pause, we can make it the yeah. time. Tell me. Okay, so she's gonna say it later, but she claims, oh no, I lost my map. The one Gret's holding is Miriam's. Shouldn't Miriam and Tom instantly be like, why do you have our map? That's that point. is weird. She yeah. stole it. She stole it from Tom in that last scene. They don't think to question Fiore on why 
Gret suddenly has Tom's meth that he had in his back pocket. Maybe, maybe they're just used to Fiori's antics at this point. Oh yeah, of course you pickpocketed us. Sounds like you That's... missed that in the proofreading of this episode. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. I had no proofreading in the last couple of episodes. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it I, shows. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I may have had a hand in this episode too. So, uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I have my shovel. Mine too. Oh no. I think I forgot my map. The one Gret is holding is Miriam's. Do you think they'll penalize you for that? What? Why do you have my map? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have our map? <laughs> <laughs> Follow me. We'll go looking for the finish. Miriam is unfazed by it. Like, sure. Maybe they're just like, go figures. She's always, you know, screwing stuff up. Maybe uh, you just... How many times is everyone going to fall for Fiori and Gret's tricks? Apparently, we haven't learned our darn lesson yet. <laughs> I love that she didn't even need to add the darn. But no, em true. emphasize her country. <laughs> Gret is so I'll be more careful. If you see her, stay away! Okay, thanks, Gabby. It's like so interesting, the dichotomy of how Ellie is usually like this this soft-spoken character and Gabby is just 100%- <laughs> Gabby is, is mostly screams, yeah. You know, opposites attract, right? Yeah, like, it really, really is like a yin True. and yang. Going to the finish line! I don't know. Are you sure this is the correct path? Let me check. Oh, hello. Mm. Oh boy. Oh, they tricked us. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, shocks. <laughs> oh, bummer. <laughs> Come on, Miriam. You can do this. Oh, my. This was such a wild scene reading it. I was in oh, awe of yeah. this. <laughs> How do you think it felt to to actually say these lines? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my heart. I Miriam? I feel like Ellie should have been like, yo, Gabby, go check on her. I'ma run across this finish line real yeah, quick. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get to that. <laughs> Miriam! Oh no. Miriam? <laughs> When I read that in the script, like, Miriam collapses to the ground, uh, I was, no freaking way, right? <laughs> she has so much faith that Ellie would come back, like, this was a very risky plan. Right? But I think, again, it's because Ellie is actually, like, not, like, a bad person, right? And I think yeah. Miriam was banking on that. <laughs> Calling to me. <laughs> but also, if Miriam was playing like this the whole game, then she would have been the morally gray character. I'm just yeah. saying, if her if her immunity was risked sooner in the game, she would have been an Ellie. Miriam is our second wow. Yes. Bang. Out of the game. I can't believe it. <laughs> Oof. I'm sorry, Ellie. Poor Ellie. Yeah. What the hell was that? <laughs> it was the only option. Which is what Ellie says too. My husband once taught me. Maybe I won't always beat them with this, but you can always beat them with this. All right, that Win. is actually where we're going to wrap up this episode for now, because now <laughs> Ellie is gone. And we're going to continue with this finale episode in the next interview. All right, thoughts about what we just witnessed. What was this chaos? <laughs> it's it's very interesting how she risked it all. Like, all these factors had to come into play. Ellie first had to notice. She had to come back. She had to agree to stay with Miriam. She had to get close to Miriam. Miriam had to grab her shovel and throw it away. There were just so many factors that could have not gone <laughs> according to how yeah. miriam envisioned it but it's it's more so to me because i can fully believe that miriam gave up hope if it was between her and ellie like ellie was they already established that ellie was going to dominate over miriam so i i'm not but what i'm more surprised at is that miriam probably just came up with this idea on the spot like okay what <laughs> yeah. is the one way that i can win now 
fake no. my own death. Yeah. <laughs> Here I go. I will say though, Miriam is a massive hypocrite because I mean, like in one of the previous episodes, Ellie's like, it was the only way. And Miriam's like, well, was it though? Like, couldn't you have done other things? And Absolutely. Again, yeah. here she is being Jeez. like, it was the only way. Wow. And it's like, or you could yeah. have just, you know, been like the better competitor. But. Miriam right. took yeah. a lot of like standing the high ground this season. Very and much which, so. From, yeah. from her perspective, probably made sense because she wasn't the one like playing the game like Fiore and Alex. She was just sticking with her friends. But, yeah. you know, she did like against Ellie, she was like, I can't believe you did that. And yeah. then Ellie's like, well, can you blame me? It's just like, yeah, it gives Ellie that that extra validation there. But like yeah. Miriam, and then she, wow. when given the opportunity, Miriam does the exact same thing that Ellie does. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that 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 love that last line too because I don't know if you noticed, but it was a it's a line from Survivor, said by uh, Suri. Oh, really? During um, yeah, you you can't always beat them with this, but you can always beat them with this. It was um. Uh, spoilers for Survivor uh, fans versus favorites season 16, but they managed. So there was an alliance of five that Sri was in, and one person won immunity, not in their alliance, and it was the final six. They convinced him to give up his immunity necklace, and then they voted him out. Oh and wow! Then, oh. While voting, while voting him out, Sri said, it "May not be able to beat him with this all the time, but you can always beat him with this." Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I see. Yeah, that's that's, cold. that's a fun callback. Yeah, it's a it's a wild exit for Ellie, and I agree with Miriam. Uh, pretty much doing the same thing uh, as Ellie did uh, in the episode that Jake went home, only to a lesser extent. Like yeah. this is this is dirty playing right here. <laughs> yeah. Can I also just say I love this final two from a generational standpoint. Yeah. Very the much young, so. Yeah. The youngest contestant ever versus the oldest contestant ever is such like nobody ever thought that this would be the no. final two. And no. it's just yeah. with with most shows only casting people that are around like the teenager slash twenties range, it's it's so interesting seeing this final two. Yeah, very true. Yeah, and I think, especially with Miriam being here, I think most people thought she was going to be like a joke character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she was going out like third, fourth, maybe fifth, maybe sixth. And now she's still, she kept on being in the game, kept on winning challenges, and people slowly started to suspect, wait a minute. Yeah. I think there's a definite argument that Miriam is the best, like, if we're rating like the players and like their ability, I think Miriam is definitely up there as one of the best players to ever play the game. Yeah, probably. In the end, she got no votes against her. She was never targeted for elimination. Has Miriam she... gotten no votes against her? At yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, wow. She also did great in the physical challenges. I mean, she had like all of oh, the yeah. skills. You know, it yeah. wasn't like she was just like floating by. <laughs> yeah, she was never targeted. She won challenges. She made moves. She took out Alec at final four. She took out Gret that first time with Dan and Gabby. Yeah. She was making moves. I definitely think she was she's probably the best competitor players in maybe at this point at in all of, of DC actually. Well we'll have to see in All Stars how she holds up, I guess. Right, yeah. We'll exactly. have to see. <laughs> mur, mur, mur. I think that is actually where we're going to wrap up this episode here. So I want to thank you guys both very much for joining me in this episode. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Yeah, thanks for having yeah. us. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, before we wrap up, I want to give you both the opportunity to like shout out some stuff that you've been doing. So if people are interested in seeing more of you guys, where can they go? Um, Rachel, shall I start with you? Sure. So um, really, the only social media I have right now is my Instagram which is uh, at Rachel Flakes. Um, so you can follow me on there, post about voiceover projects I'm doing and my work at NASA and the occasional other thing too. So uh, feel free to follow me on there. Okay, nice and short. <laughs> Fine, what about Hi. you? Yeah. So yeah, the only uh, channel I'd like to plug is um, Vyster9 Music, which is my own personal cover channel. I have about, where we I've now surpassed uh, 500 subscribers, which is, Yay. GG. I have four covers now, more like on the way, but singing is really my passion. So if you wanna, if you just wanna check out 
random covers, go check that out and maybe subscribe? Question mark? Exclamation mark. Go do it. Exclamation He's very talented. Boy. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm going to add Odd Nation Cartoons channel as always to that list. If you are interested in seeing more of the episodes, uh, especially now that the new season is just around the corner, I heard they are doing something along the lines of uh, January, probably, maybe. So uh, if you are ready for All Stars, please go consider subscribing to Odd Nation Cartoons and also consider subscribing to the Silly Billy channel if you want to stay up to date on episodes that I will be doing. I'm back. We're doing more blind reactions again. So it's going to be a fun time and I Ooh. can't wait for that. Yeah. All right. I think that wraps it up. So once again, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, no thanks problem. again. <laughs> thanks again. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I might just end the video on that. This is goodbye. <laughs> A little jump scare at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>